My name is Cody Wright. I play bass with the Jonathan Scales Four Orchestra out of Asheville, North Carolina. I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about how I use the pick on the bass to do grooves and, and solos and accents and things like that, particularly how I hold it and how I use uh, muting to achieve certain effects. And also to get your left hand in shape if you're not used to doing sort of a shout kind of a bass line with your left hand, which is pretty rapid, you know. A lot of all the fingers are working you know um, and so we're gonna start on D which is the I'm gonna use the, the pinky finger which is I'm gonna call it four so we got D F sharp G G sharp A B C C sharp D and so we pick up the pick and we have And as you'll notice, sometimes I don't always end up on the four on that last note there. You know, sometimes I'll end up on the three. And it's just a matter of what my hand feels like doing. Uh, I just try to stay in a natural state and not confine myself into to something I have to think too much about. Okay, so that's basically the left hand. And so we're using all of our fingers and we're going to definitely feel it in our muscles. Uh, especially if we're not that used to doing things like that. I'm using muting here, which is I pick a technique that I picked up from guitar players. I'm holding the pick, and I use a I use a D'Andrea uh, 1.5 millimeter, pretty thick, kind of like a mandolin pick. And I hold it, and you can see there I don't really have that much. I'm not holding it like this. You know, I'm choking up on it, and I have a little, just a little bit of it there that I'm using. I like to say the less you see, the less you hear of the pick. You know, I don't know how true that is, but pretty true for me. I'm basically about an inch and a half away from the bridge, up from the bridge. And the higher up you come when you're muting, the more radical the sound is going to be. You know, the more you're actually, it's going to choke off the note almost all the way. You know, it's only when you get about, you know, between half an inch and an inch away from the bridge that you can really still make out the note, you know, and do it on all the strings. And make sure that when you do it on all the strings, you can get it even. So one string isn't ringing out more than another or something like that, you know. And so how radical I use my hand to mute the strings depends on how loud my drummer is playing because listening and your whole band. Because listening to the band is the most important part of being a bass player is playing sympathetically with everybody else. And then something else you might want to do after you get comfortable with just the right hand to start moving your left hand around more uh, and you can we can go back to that shout bass line you know up down up down up down up down up you know something like that and we can extend it up the octaves and, and things like that I've seen some players play with a arched wrist like this it's more of a flamenco or a gypsy jazz kind of thing. And you might want to experiment with that for your own style because everybody's body is different. Everybody's hands are different. You know, you're designed differently. There were some bass players that, their, it's like their body was built to hold the bass. You, know, you look at Jocko's hands and arms and they're, it's just his natural position. So with, if you're going to use the pick, find your natural wrist position, your natural hand position. And for me, it happens to be you know, where my arm is sort of just straight down on the bass like this. Uh, but there are some people that are more comfortable with the sound and feel of doing it like that. There was a great guitar player named Sean Lane that actually played with his pick almost forming a 90 degree angle with the string. You know, and you might want to try that out on the bass, you know, experiment, see what works for you.
So how that all ties back into the baseline that I was showing you at the beginning of the video is that once you get comfortable with the left hand and the right hand, you can start adding rhythmic accents into what you're doing. Uh, little things I pick up from, from slap players or finger, finger style players, you know, so it's something like, something like this, you know. <laughs> Um, octaves, you know, so we have D here, and we can do that sort of thing on any of the octaves. So we have D here and an F sharp, D, you know, A flat, and an A, like that, and coming back up. So really, we can do whatever we want in terms of accenting those notes. And the more you play with that sort of thing, the more you'll find out that it's like a bottomless pit of things you can uh, dig into. And one thing that I also like to do is use my middle finger over my right hand in addition to the pick. To get that sort of, you know, plucked sound out of it too. Sort of a hybrid picking uh, technique that I picked up from guitar players. And the best thing to do, especially when you start working on accents, is put a metronome on and set it to a tempo that is comfortable for you. You know, it might be really slow, it might be really fast, it may be in the middle. Uh, it's just all about, you know, starting out naturally. For more information on me and my band, you can check me out at www.codywrightmusic.com or www.johnjonscales.com for the Jonathan Scales Orchestra.